I'm Sean Lars and I'm 14 years of age. How long you been with the club, Sean? Uh, two and a bit years now. So yeah, it's pretty good. Boys. Now give it everything, Sean, everything, and attack that hill. Get into it, go, Sean, go! And what do you like about cycling? Everything. Um, just to race, socialise, fast, paced stuff. You know. Dion Wilkes, 46, uh, started just before I was 14. My dad mentioned it a few times and um, over a few years and I had no interest. He used to like listening to it on the radio like everyone in Grafton did. He used to be telegraphed live on the radio. That was before my time. I thought I was pretty hot stuff on this red bike that he got organised for me. Little did I find out a year and a half later that it was 34 years old and it was like a ship and, and uh, he used to ride it to school. <laughs> yeah, so did a fair few years, went to Europe, that didn't work, come back, got a business, started a family and uh, they've just left home now doing their own thing. They call me Little D. I'm 50 years old, and I think the D stands for D grade, no matter what these other guys say. <laughs> About five years ago, I said to me wife, I might join the Grafton Cycle Club. And she said, yes, D, OK. I've been pushing shit uphill ever since. I just bought a bike off Gumtree from a, a guy in town one day and thought, oh yeah, this could be something, and just decided, all right, I'll try and be half good at this, and so far I think I'm going all right, yeah. Always been interested in it, and then um, my na na next door neighbour told me about the club. I like to be doing in between two to three hundred k's each week. Though with, with, with work and other stuff, ha haven't been able to do that much recently. Go hard and have fun. You know, just yeah, push yourself, see, see what you can do. A bit like Dion, a bit interesting as a kid when the Commonwealth Bank Classic came through town and yeah, hang out over the track a little bit. But, um, yeah, then did nothing for a long time. Started riding mountain bikes and then got back on a road bike. Oh no, probably five, six years ago I suppose. Yeah, I've been riding bikes since I was about 23, so when I finished uni and came back to Grafton, that's when I started riding bikes. I'd have been out training with my dad a few days before and he gave me a little spot and he said, if you get to this spot, he said, go from there. And I was actually riding with Stuart McPherson at the time and he was teaching me a few of the ins and outs and we got to that spot and I just went and not knowing that the, the main field was only a couple of hundred behind gaining on us. And yeah, I actually had a win in my first race, so it's a good way to make you keep coming back, I suppose. I really like the idea of the getting up in the morning, going and meeting all your mates and you get a good solid training session in it before, before the day even starts, you know? It's a nice way to start the day. I'm sort of too old to, to stop trying and still young enough to keep trying. I just I just like the fitness side of things. Oh, you only get the odd a-hole that sees how close they can get to you sort of thing. But 
other than that, you just sort of try and hold, hold your line and not get too cranky, memorise the number plate and go knock on their door. Not a safe sport, it's a good sport but it's not a safe sport. A lot, a lot of the, the majority of the cars are okay, I do believe. It only takes one to hurt you. 3k from home, and he didn't see me, looked up into the sun maybe, and then a blind spot in his car, and he thought it was clear and all of a sudden, I'm in his road, aren't I? So bang, hit me and sort of knocked me around for him. Broken ribs, punctured lungs, fractured pelvis, uh, fractured C6, C7 vertebra neck, uh, busted eyes, split ears, split under the chin, busted finger, uh, split in the wrist, and a lot of sort of superficial bruising and Sort of trauma. Um, after they woke me up, you know, I woke up and oh, geez, I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm still alive. Uh, and up there, I said, I was very lucky. And only because of the fitness of cycling, I suppose, and that, that sort of got me through it. Otherwise, he said, people my age, sort of, that's normally the end of them when they get that much trauma. Yeah, pretty good. It's uh, It's been a pretty good adventure so far. When I started riding, I was 125 kilos, and as of today, I'm about 93 kilos. So it's been a good health kick for me. I think my first race, I think I averaged about 25 kilometers an hour. Um, so yeah, now I'm sort of racing with the, the scratchies and the chopping block guys. So yes, yeah, it's going, going pretty good. I do shave my legs. Nick Stevens showed me all the tricks. He actually comes over and does it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep myself occupied. Yeah. Pay a bit of attention to the other guys around, listen to what, particularly guys like Dion, listen to what they got to say. Um, yeah, just and stick at it. Don't don't get disheartened. It's gonna hurt. I give it was if it didn't hurt, everyone would do it. But just keep suck it up and have a go. It's all about having a bit of fun and push yourself to new limits, see what you can do. The, the track just sort of died off in the whole nation. Um, numbers dropped down and the problem the club had here, from what I understand, was the football field used to go into each corner of the um, track. So they were sort of scoring tries and sliding through the sawdust in the one of the bitumen and, so they wanted it dug up and the cricket cricket club, I think, wanted it sort of removed as well and things changed and Criterium Racing took off and road got more popular and track just died off and then um, the club was offered by the council to redevelop some land and they built a crit track on the deal that the McKittrick Park got dug up. In the late 1880s, the new safety bike came to the Clarence Valley. Cheaper, more comfortable and made from good sound materials, the advertisement said, ride a bicycle for health, pleasure, work and sport. And so the bike craze took off. The Grafton branch of the League of New South Wales Wheelmen was formed in 1892, led by President G.H. Harley and Vice Presidents J.T. McKittrick and F. McGurran Esquires. Now the bicycle enthusiasts could race in their own official club. By the early 1900s, bicycle shops were popping up, including Schaefer's in Skinner Street and Freedom Cycles in Fitzroy Street next to the Daily Examiner, with local photographer Carl Ailes capturing the earliest cycling photos. Racing bikes became a popular sport, with the race finish line often at the pub, where riders could down the amber liquid to celebrate or commiserate. By the 1920s, track cycling was in full swing, with events at Fisher Park and Grafton pulling big crowds, then McKittrick Park and South Grafton. Riders like Cyclone Johnny Walker became household names, and the likes of J.B. Walsh, gun rider and entrepreneur, brought in big names to compete against the local lads. Back then, Grafton was a bike town. Everyone had a bike and the whole town would go to the races. Times have changed and the tracks closed down many years ago but the memories of the heyday of cycling lives on in the minds and scrapbooks of the mighty Wheelman of the Clarence.
I had uh, my eye on this track bike at uh, Ralph Green Cycle Shop in South Grafton. It was a beautiful bike to me and uh, I wanted it. My mum said, no way, no way. You're not going you know, to uh, race bikes. So being a, a naughty boy, I uh, took to my old uh, Winnall bike and uh, with the back of, the, back of an axe and uh, belted in the back forks. And I said, Mum, the car backed over my bike. I need a new one. She said, OK, that's dangerous. You better go and get a new one. And I went and bought this track bike, which had no, no brakes, but Mum didn't know. And uh, from there, I got into track racing. I'm Kevin Brindle, I'm 77 years of age and still trying to win a bike race. Winning uh, has always been in my blood, I guess. I'm always very competitive. Uh, I always coming on back from a dam ride on Wednesdays. There's usually a bunch of us and uh, I quite often say to myself, no, I'm tired today, I'm not going to sprint, I'm just going to sit on the back. But once the uh, sprint starts, I can't help myself. But uh, yeah, time will come, I guess, when uh, the younger riders will just be too fast for me and I'm not competitive and I'll, I'll use some sort of an excuse not to exp <laughs> have a go at them. When I first started the race, I was going, leaving home to go to the bike races and my mother said to me, don't go too fast. <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> My first thoughts were it was pretty scary to start with, but yeah, the track racing was yeah, a great spectacle. Being a 10 year old schoolboy racing it on McKittrick Park uh, in awe of some of the, the great riders around at the time of the Ralph Green and the John Crawford and, and uh, Popeye Carley coming up. Yeah. That's uh, what I won the uh, New South Wales mile with. Well, Ralph sold them all to us, but none of them was made for your body. He just fucking ordered them, and the first one I bought off him, it had no much underneath the, the front wheel. That's um, you could have put bloody uh, uh, what's the name on it? Seven iron when I took it up. Oh, Nelly, yeah, it would have been seven iron when I really took it up, yeah. But it took me 12 months to win a race, and then. Well, I was pretty good, but it's like anybody else that trained. I was working in a mill too. And then when I won the New South Wales uh, mile race, I, I had two months off work. Well, I wasn't working, and I used to go training all, all day. If you don't train, you don't win races. You should know that. And a marvellous thing how it sticks to you. And nearly every, every race I won, I come down the outside. You can do it at McKittrick Park. Fig tree on. I used to go around trying to sing Popeye the Sailor Man, and the fellow next door, uh, Tommy McCoy, christened me Popeye. And then I took up cycling, and Jack Burgess knew that I was called Popeye. And of course, if you got a nickname, and it was good over the wireless. His name was Tussacure, nickname, because he used to work at Thomas's going to school, Thomas's chemist, and he had a cure all named Tussacure, and he used to drink the dredges out of the bottles. When we do a track work, Jack Burgess was the uh, announcer. And right. we, they had all names for us, you see. I was Raja, Raja Green. Uh, Ralph was, uh, well, RK. Uh, Popo was Popo. And then he had a, another nephew, Pipeye Cayley. Pipeye. And then there was Tal Thallium, which was a slow moving dope, mind you. And then there, Nelly, Nelly Skinner was Autumn Leaves, because he's always fallen off. And then Raja's escape, Thallium was coming outside. 
Everyone had a nickname. Bull Raggins uh, used to tie, do his shoes watermelon. up with bar buyer. Yes. Watermelon Billy Lee. Yeah, yeah, watermelon. <laughs> he got caught selling watermelon. Ralph, you were the Oh, yes. second and third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he said, green, green, green. Oh, Stan, oh, I'll rip all up. Fella name. Blue Asprey. There's a lot of other, the older fellas there. They're all the seniors. You know, there, there wasn't a great lot until Ralph come along. And uh, that, that's more or less all there was. And then us juniors coming up were the ones that were gonna make the racing. That time and period, there was only, you could only have road races and they used to have them at South Grafton at the Royal Hotel and that's the photo of them and when they got them together there wasn't a great lot of people who could do both like Ralph Green. Uh, he was pretty good on both, he was excellent at say track riding and road riding he was fairly good whereas Kevin Brindle was good on the track too but Kevin Beckridge he was a terrific ride rider. He, he won, I think he won one of the divisions of um, Gold in the Sydney when they had that. Before I rode in the Gold in the Sydney, I went back, I was living at Harwood, so I went back to Grafton with me in laws for eight weeks so I could ride to work at back at Harwood. And I'd leave up there half past five in the morning, foggy mornings, winter time, and you, you might see one delivery truck on the way down. There would be nothing else. I left school and for a short period I worked in the cane fields hauling cane with horse and carts and I raised enough money to go to Grafton and bought my first bike at Doug Norris's and hopped on it and rode it back to Harwood. And that's how it all started. Then I used to ride off to all over the place on that, a few of my mates, my me, me brother was involved in it a bit and we'd ride to Evans Head on Sundays and just for a swim and ride back home again, which was quite a ride them days, a gravel road most of the way in here. And uh, I've kept the old bike going. On the first bike race I end up meeting up with some of the riders from Grafton on me. I went to work in Grafton and I was travelling back and forth to Harwood and on them been doing that I mixed in with some riders and got in talked into riding into Grafton to walk a bike race which I hadn't seen a bike race. I didn't know what it was all about. And they put me on virtual scratch. And from then on I end up Everyone in front of me, I just went to the front and kept going till, till the finishing line. And an old mate of mine, Ray Martin, he went past me and I wondered what happened then. The race was all over. But I did get past this time. It's seen quite a few battles. It is old, but it has also seen a lot of battles. I saw one bloke get his head caught between the the track and the pedal when it came down. It also takes over on an Anzac day. Riding against Ralph and Ralph, must have, he must have ra nudged Ralph and Ralph came off his bike and this other bloke came off his bike uh, about 50 yards before the finishing line. And this other bloke picked up his push bike, the A-frame, and wrapped it over Greeny's head. <laughs> Greeny wasn't too impressed, I think there was a few punches thrown in there. I'm Henry Corwell, but I'm known as Corky. I've had that all my life. And I'm now not just over 96. I used to race on Fisher Park. It was a pretty tough school them days. They had motorbike racing and foot racing and all sorts of sports there. Big carnival days. A lot of top riders. We had Gordon Layton. He used to ride on Fisher Park. He beat every visitor that ever come to Grafton. Tremendous sprinter. 
Uh, it was one of the scratch races. It was. I know it was a championship race. Uh, my brother was riding in it uh, over near the tennis courts at Grafton, and they were coming around there, and somebody knocked Jack McPherson off the bike, and uh, he he crashed off the bike, and he I don't know if it was the next lap or one and a half or something, and as they were coming around, he threw his bike straight in amongst a whole lot of them. <laughs> I think they were nearly the whole field down. <laughs> There was a lot of betting used to go on in them days, and that's what I think killed Rafton, uh, the betting. I and mean, you didn't know where the blokes were fair dinkum or what was happening, because there was so much money involved. They had bookmakers there and everything else. And they opened South Grafton, and they used to race the South then. And then the lights were put on about 1938, I think. But they built an outboard track at, at uh, on South Grafton, and Grafton was closed down just after that. All these were sponsored by Melbourne Star, I think. That come up here, Lenny Rogers was. He was Australian champion. He had a bike that used to rattle. And he used to come up here and give you about half a quarter of a lap start. He used to be behind scratch. And he used to, uh, in a three or four lap race, and, and you'd think, oh, I'll do old Eddie this time. You'd be you're well in front of him, and the next minute you could hear his bike rattling coming up behind you. <laughs> he was good, too good for our fella. Grafton in well the year I won the race. Wasn't my best ride. I uh, was suffering bad with cramp. I had a broken spoke in my front wheel. I broke my toe clip going over the Grafton Bridge, which in them days you had toe straps and toe clips. Uh, it was a terrible ride, really. Uh, the year before I run second and uh, it was a much better ride, but the year I won it, I, I felt shocking. I said to my club mate, Maury Cordo, I said, if you want to get away, I won't chase. And I'll try and hold them back. And Maury attacked them up wide gully, but uh, the rest of the bunch were just going too strong and got him back in. Coming into Inverell, the, the sprint started and I was sitting in the bunch and I, th I had all these cramps and I thought, I'm going to leave it till the last minute to sprint. Then all of a sudden I looked up and the finishing line was almost upon us. I nearly jumped out of the saddle and got the fright of my life because the finishing line was closer than I thought. But luckily I got there and Maury was second, which was very good, and Kevin Barter from Tamworth was third. Alan Grinville won the first one and there was wooden bridges uh, covered in dust and spare tyres around their shoulders. I take my hat off to those boys that uh, finished that race. The highlight for me, I suppose, was winning the 1964 Goulburn to Sydney. I didn't really intend to go down, uh, but I rode in a two, couple of two-day tours in Grafton to, we went to Maxville and back and one of the Newcastle riders, Lou Bennett, said you should make it your aim to go and ride the Goulburn to Sydney because you can sprint and you can stay. One of the members of the club said you shouldn't go to the Goulburn because you're not a great hill climber. You'll never get over Razorback by that just made me more determined and um, and I really didn't know we'd been over Razorback. I just knew I went over a pretty big hill but <laughs> I didn't know that that was the one. I was still waiting for it when the, when the race finished. So where's, where's Razorback? But coming down the other side though, I, I had a feeling that's where I'd be. Mm. He was six weeks old when I sat him on it, on a tiny bike that I made him. 12-inch uh, wheels, and he, he has still got that bike. 
The other four, the other three boys ro raced on that bike also, but anyway, he has that he has that bike now. And then the other boys were only four years old when they raced. My brother used to race. He was a triple state champion. Well, that's Ralph Green. He, he was a mighty bike rider. And uh, he should have been in the Olympics, but Olympics weren't there. Professionals weren't in the Olympics in those days. I guess, I honestly say, that was why most of the bike riders that were around here got so good and done so well was because of Ralph Green. He was good to go away with. You know, like, if you went away with Ralph, he had a good time. Because he knew everybody too. Yeah. Yeah, Ralph travelled a lot. But Ralph Green was probably one of the best riders here them days. He was a top rider, tough. And he was another rider like they used to ride in the early days. He was tough. <laughs> no beg your pardons with him. I think everybody in town used to go to the bike races in the early days. I know they, they used to race back years ago, before my time. They were riding in big old bikes. I like the way they dressed in the days. You talk about dress. They seem to go like they're going to a church meeting or something. Uh, but that's how it was, and their bikes looked a bit crude. There was no gears on those. That was Kevin Brindle's old frame Wasn't when it? he first took it up. Yeah, he, uh, my nephew owned it at the finish. He, I don't know who he bought it or. That's the one he first started with, and Ralph sold him that, and it was too bloody big for him. That's that's the trouble with Ralph. Kevin was only little, and that's how big your head had had in it. He was like a pimple on a pumpkin. I'm not going to put all that in. I'm going to cut it out. Well, this bike of Kevin, the frame of Kevin's, it was, uh, it's only the frame that we're building up, putting other wheels into. Uh, replicate the uh, a bike, a bike, you know. A Super Alcians. Yeah, Ralph sold the Super Alcians. It was the, uh, it's the wording was the uh, highest degree in sport in Greece. We've been working on bikes ever since, uh, well, since I was eight years old. I used to buy frames and things at an auction sale for five shillings and then uh, put them back together again in the fortnight time, I'd have a bicycle ready for sale for four pounds. As you can see in this shed, I'm still going. I've been going ever since. Uh, we've been in the bike game for over 100 years. With my father and uncles and uh, bro my brother and myself. And then my children are still riding. Uh, three, I had the four boys racing at the same time. And myself and became state champions. All of us. Way back in the 50s and the 60s, uh, uh, Wagga and Grafton were the most bike conscious towns in, in New South Wales. Everybody had a bike. Here you go, Kevin. On that. This is Kevy's old frame and we're going to get him round here to uh, sit on it and uh, bring, back, bring back memories of the old days, of the old frame that he bought from the Ralph Green Cycle Shop. Good day, Kev. Right there. How's things? Not too bad. Haven't seen on the road lately. No, no. Good to see you again. <laughs> Hello, Kev. Let's go this way. All right. Here's an old bike I've seen Yeah, around. that's an old bike. That's, that's wait a minute. That's, can you recognise it? I think I've seen it around. Yeah, well, that's, that's your old frame. My old frame, the old yeah. The old first frame you bought. The old black Alcyon. The only uh, recognisable name on it is the Alcyon across here. Oh, yeah. Where? It was black when I bought it.
brother sold it to me. The old shop in Prince Street or no, in no, Spring Street? In Spring Street. Mm. Yeah. She's been around a bit. Let me crack underneath here. Oh, right. So, I don't know how that happened. A cheap old frame, I suppose. <laughs> Well, your brother didn't tell him to be cheap. <laughs> <laughs> when I bought it, naturally the frame was too big for me. I had to shoot right down as far as it go. <laughs> it was Ralph would tell you, only. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to buy it back? No. No, no. <laughs> no. no it was a good, good frame back in them days. It was about 1953 or something. I was only 15 when I bought it. Six o'clock closing was the pub and all. So everybody, everybody flocked to the uh, Cooper Park. There was no dogs on Friday night, so where did they have to go? So they come to the cycle and then you were, you were really uh, uh, sort of heroes, you know, uh, getting off. Yes, they wanted to change it into a football field. Yeah, the uh, cricketers and the football was ruined. Uh, what, ha what happened, uh, the football, the field was uh, uh, it, was, it went onto the track and they had to put sawdust all over it so they, you know, the boys wouldn't hurt themselves. <laughs> anyway, and, and, and engulfed on the, on the track, on the four positions. Footballs are soft. We used to fall on the track and it didn't worry us. <laughs> Look at the collarbones I've got. <laughs> you ran into me. I ran over the top of you. <laughs> There's no young, young kids coming through. That's the disappointing part of it. It's more or less a veterans club now. There's no young young kids coming through apart from Shawnee Marsh and Callop. It's just disappointing, but uh, I think having no track racing probably is the cause of that. Because after school, and that we used to all head to McIntyre Park and ride around there. And a few of us old guys were really just disappointed. Um, but the new guys coming through that hadn't ridden much on the track didn't mean much to them at all. But uh, people like Roger, Popeye, Carly, myself, and a few others around town that rode the track, it was really disappointing. I always said that all oh, of my ashes spread over the track when I died, but <laughs> that's gone. <laughs> well, there's a lot of good memories over there. Across that one. Oh, that's a problem. Oops. <laughs>